Hey guys, this is Scott from Hidden Valley Homestead and welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. That way you guys don't miss any videos. We're empty, nest empty, empty nesters trying to get out of California and escape to our Hidden Valley Homestead in Idaho. So if you're coming back for part two of how to build a patio cover, I apologize it took so long to get part two out, but life just got in the way. So come along for the ride here and we're gonna finish up this patio cover right now. If you guys are coming back for part two, part one, I set the foundation post uh, supports for the post for this patio cover. I showed you how to uh, square it up with the house and to measure it and to get it centered. And if you haven't seen that video, I'm gonna link it right there in the top for you and uh, you guys can go check out how I how I built those to code we talk a little bit about city codes and ordinances and whatnot uh, and this I actually put the frame up put the roof choice put the plywood on and then and then roof it and uh, and part of our disaster preparedness urban homesteading is a DIY uh, attitude and making do with what you can making do with what you have being resourceful the plywood was something that was coming off a job site that they were throwing away and it was in perfect shape. Good waterproof stuff, really expensive. All of the, uh, the roof joists and these, um, these 4x4s were in the clearance bin at, at Lowe's. I got them for like 20 cents on the dollar, so... oh, Marley wants to come out and... Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. You want to be out here? Okay. She always wants to be out here with, with us whenever we're doing anything out here. So anyway, guys, um, we'll show you how to do this, how to, how to, uh, to finish off this, this patio cover. And at the end, uh, I have a quick little clip that shows you how to reinforce this thing uh, for earthquakes or they, they use earth, uh, hurricane ties. Uh, and, I, and I tie this, in, this thing into my house and make it as solid and as strong as I possibly can uh, to, res to, to, to so that it will suffice for anybody that might question whether it was built to code or not. Uh, again, I did not get a permit for this. In this city, they want a permit for a patio cover, which is absolutely ridiculous. I own this house, I own this property. I understand codes are there for your protection for the most part, but something like this, uh, the city, I really just feel like they want they just want to get their little piece of the pie. They you know, want to get their tax money. Just like water heaters down here. If you're going to change a water heater out, you're supposed to get a permit to change a water heater out. Screw that. I did not get a, when my water he heater went out about five years ago, I didn't get a permit. I went and bought one and put it in myself. I made sure to strap it down with the earthquake strapping just in case, because we have earthquakes in California. But um, you do things to code, then you don't have to worry about it. Um, now, when we did this house, and we put the windows and doors and stucco and all that good stuff. I'm trying to, hey, hey. It's, it never fails. When, when I'm trying to do videos, she, she wants to make noise and play. Anyway, the code stuff really becomes important when you add a bathroom like what we just did uh, or add new windows and doors and stucco, that kind of thing. When you go to sell a house, people are gonna wanna see some of those items have been done per, for a permit. Patio covers aren't that critical. A water heater nobody cares about so anyway here we go we're gonna finish this off right now again leave a comment uh, and, I'll, and I do read all the comments so if you have a question you can always email me hidden valley homestead 18 at gmail.com Beginning one, I got that squared up against the house. I got this 
I got my vertical nice and plumb. Got it all screwed in. Got all my hangers on there and I'm gonna proceed to cut all of my hangers. And the next next little segment of video, you're gonna see all of the, uh, the raptors in. Or the roof choice. So got all of those put in. And uh, yeah, after that, get it all screwed together. And then, then it's time for the roof. Throw some plywood up there. Okay, I got all the, the joists up. So my buddy Alan, he says, hey, when you go to Lowe's, go to the far left. They always have the clearance area. I went over there and they're getting rid of all their cedar for whatever reason. These cedar two by six by 10, there was a pile of them of 20 and they were originally $270. They marked them down to 50 bucks. They were $11.50 a piece. That was a score right there. That saved me some huge. And they were nice and light, already cured, all straight. It's just some of these things, if you look at them, that's the part that's on the outside of the log. So a lot of them have a little bit of an edge or a corner that's got a little bit of round to it. But for a stinking patio cover, yeah. I'll just put that to the top. Who cares? All right, plywood's next. So I measured these things and when I spaced them out, I started with the corner and I started measuring two feet. Well, I had forgotten that over here, I did the overlap. I did a four inch overlap. So I had to eliminate two inches, so it's not exactly 24 feet, it's actually 23 feet and eight inches. Which means that my plywood, eight foot pieces, and I really did want an overhang, so that worked out perfect uh, to do a two inch, inch and a half, two inch overhang on each edge, okay? But I'm like a dummy, and I'm not a carpenter. I measured 24 inches on center on all these. Well, then I realized I needed to do the two inches on either side. So I had to go back and take two inches and move everything over two inches. Well, it only took a few minutes to unscrew those, measure it out nice, and then and then screw those all back in. And then it measured out perfectly. And now I've got those plywoods up there just right, ready to screw down, so. Okay. Ah, we got the plywood on. Yeah, look at all that shade. Oh, that is awesome. I'll have to cut a ah, two, two foot. 26 inch strip. Look at all that shade. Never again am I gonna have water splash on my brand new double pane windows. Oh, that water was dripping right off. Water was falling straight down and splashing and seeping into my frames, and soaking the frames. Brand new frame, brand new door. It's gonna ruin the whole thing. Oh, that shade's so nice. And the finished product. Got the roofing on, the flashing on. Came out pretty darn good. And my pylons, all I gotta do is gonna put some stone around the pylons. I'm gonna cover those in river rock. Done. I'll protect my windows. Protect my windows and doors. Good stuff. And the roofing is done. Holy smokes. So that was a three day project. Put the frame out. Then I roofed it, did some tiles, matched the existing. Except for this flat roof right here. It would have been nice to have done shingles on those flat roofs, but the flat roof, I think you have to have the, the bigger sheets. But Anyway, there's my 10 by 24 foot patio. All done. Here's the top view, you guys. Gonna have to have it. 
Gotta protect those windows and doors. That came out pretty good. I'm not a roofer by any means, but not bad. And the finished product. Got the roofing on, got the flashing on. Came out pretty darn good. And my pylons, all I gotta do is gotta put some stone around the pylons. Cover those in river rock. All done. Yeah, protect my windows. Protect my windows and doors. Good stuff. So I use 3 8 inch by 8 inch lag bolts and tie those right into the ceiling joists of the house. All of the screws that I used were deck screws. They're specially coated for weather and for the acid and the wood to not corrode them away. And there's another 3 inch lag that's 8 inch, eight inches long. Tied that into the, into the uh, joist, the, the ceiling joist. More deck screws. And these are all Simpson strong ties. There's another 8 inch, I'm sorry, uh, 3 inch by 8 inch lag, lag bolt. And then I use the hurricane ties on every single beam. And I did that all the way down. Every one of these posts have deck screws, coated deck screws. Especially these that get that gets covered with uh, they get sprayed with the sprinklers all, all the time. Now these things are going to get rock. I'm going to be putting rock and covering these so they don't have just the ugly cement sticking out there. All right, guys, let's talk about a couple of other little details here that I uh, kind of missed, I kind of glossed over, is that on this upright right here, I, of course, I use a level uh, both directions on this side facing the house and, this, and then the side to side, and I did that with all three of those, and I squared those things up and made them plumb when I put that cross beam on. Now, I quickly kind of glossed over this scarf joint. Now, the whole... I didn't want to do a butt connection. I wanted it to be a stronger joint. Now, if I had just simply cut this, uh, put the two pieces together and butted them up, there would only have been an inch and a half of, of, of board sitting on this upright. So I decided to overlap. I cut half of each out and overlap, and that's called a scarf joint, and then have uh, two big, long deck screws going down into this, um, as, well, as, as well as the, uh, the hanger, okay, holding it up. Um, now I, I did that to overlap it, but that also, these were two 10 foot long 4x4s. And when I did that scarf joint, I lost two inches on each side. So that actually worked out great because the plywood, they're eight foot sheets, right? So 20 and 20 would have made, I'm sorry, 10 and 10 would have made 20, which means I would have used one eight foot sheet and then another eight foot sheet and then a four foot sheet, right? But one of the details that I really wanted you guys to see is that when you're doing a roof, you need to have an overhang, okay? 
Now let's take a look at this overhang really quick. Now you guys can see that overhang, right? That's about a, an inch and a half overhang. And if you look at that edge right there, there's a, there's a metal drip rail. And you can see the edges of my shingles overlap. Now if I had made the plywood flush with the side of that 2x6, then that drip rail right there would have been laying pretty much right on the 2x6. Okay, so you guys can see that. If, if I had done that, then the water was gonna drip off and it would drip off right onto that two by six. I wanted that water to drip off that drip rail, the metal drip rail, it's not gonna rust, and it's not gonna go bad, and fall right off onto my grass. Okay, so I, I wanted that inch and a half overhang. So that scarf joint worked out perfectly because it shortened up my four by fours, and then I put my two by six started it right there at the end and then I measured on center okay uh, I take that back I didn't measure on center I uh, I actually this particular space right here was an inch and a half shorter than all of the rest of them does that make sense okay so that there's the eight foot piece there's two feet, there's two feet, there's two feet, and then there's two feet. So the ends of the plywood of those two pieces are joined and they end up right in the center. They end up right in the center of this two by six. And then the same thing down farther on. Uh, the next piece over I think that, let's see here. I think it's, I think it's that, that one right there. No, I guess it would be the next one down over there. Okay, so you want, you want these seams to end up perfectly in the middle of a two by six. That way, when you screw the two by, the, 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 the plywood, you put a screw in this direction from this piece of plywood, and then from this piece of plywood, you're gonna screw into that one, okay? So I hope that explains that, guys. Uh, when I laid this thing out, um, the mistake that I had made when I when I when I started measuring, and I started measuring uh, these joists right here. I measured, I, I made my marks on there. I started at 24 inches. Well, I had to move, I had to move this one over by an inch and a half to make sure that when I ended up over here, that I was going to be evenly spaced for the rest of them. And then when I ended up over here, I came out with an inch and a half overlap as well on this side. And that way my drip rail was not gonna be dripping right onto my two by six. Now, when I cut this plywood out here, I did a matching gap. So that way the, the water drips straight down and not on my fascia board. This piece right here is called the fascia, okay? And then, of course, you guys, when, you, when you're doing a, a patio cover, you can overlap your shingles so they overlap the edge of the plywood, but you're going to get water at some point. Water's going to curl around those, uh, those, those, those shingles and drip down onto your water. If you have the metal drip rail right here, the water will drip right onto the metal drip rail, and it's got a, li it's got a little bit of a bend to it. It'll kick out that drop and make the drops fall straight down instead of curling back up underneath. All right, so I hope that explains the last few little details. Some of you guys are probably scratching your heads going, well, how did he lay that out? You know, every 24 inches so that the plywood would end up on top of a seam. Now I did these, uh, these were two 10 footers. And then as far as, uh, as far as this, this height right here is concerned, uh, with, with, with the height of this piece right here, I basically laid uh, one of these two by sixes out right here and put a little bit of a level on it and I could see that I had a, I, I figured about a quarter inch per foot I take that back I think it was an eighth inch per foot so for 10 feet I basically went down about an inch and a, about an inch and a half is what my drop was from this point to that point my drop in elevation was about an inch 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 and a half 
So they say an eighth inch per foot, that's just like a shower drain, that was my pitch. So I measured from my level point, I measured down an inch and a half for the 10 feet because these are 10 foot pieces, I left them 10 foot. And that gave me my pitch, that way the water will roll off nice and have a, a nice pitch that it won't pool up on the roof. Um, it'll actually roll off really nice and easy. So then I cut those pieces right there, but everything else I left, uh, I left these at 10 foot. I left my fascia boards at 10 feet. The only thing that didn't end up being 10 foot were these four by fours up here because I have the scarf joint. So I tried to make it as easy as possible to lay out everything on here and lay out my plywood. I wanted to put full sheets of plywood up there, which I did until I got to one side. Obviously two eight footers made 16 foot and then to make the 20 I had to cut one and a half, but it was a four foot, but you can't even tell where the seam is at. And then on this piece right here, I had to cut a two foot piece I actually cut a little bit bigger than two foot. It's actually like two foot, three inches, I think. But I had extra plywood left over, so that's okay, because I wanted to make sure I had that extra lip. But it made the whole assembly of this thing very, very quick and very easy. And I made sure I squared everything up. I started on that side over there, and I used my square to make sure that was square. And with the plywood, the plywood is square, so if, if you need to adjust this and need to kick this over a little bit, you can. Um, but once I laid everything all nice and square, you can see my lines all the way down. That line is the same, it is even. It's kind of hard to tell here in the dark, so sorry about that, guys. So there you go, guys. Hopefully you guys learned something. Um, like I said, I'm not a carpenter, but I've watched plenty of it being done. And uh, as long as you take the time to make everything square, measure twice, cut once, that's no joke. Make sure you take the time to cut it. Make sure that's what you want to do and you can lay it out. Uh, use proper uh, screws so that they don't rust. And uh, if you build it sturdy enough, it'll last a long time and it's not going to fall apart on you. Uh, I use two by sixes. I've seen a lot of patio covers. When you do this long of a span, uh, a two by four is not going to be enough. And the two by four is going to sag over time, let alone trying to get up there and walk on it. So I use two by sixes for strength. Uh, I can walk on this thing no problem. I weigh 250 pounds. I can walk on this no problem, and it, did, it didn't even bow. Didn't even didn't even budge. So, okay, guys, thank you for tuning in. Thanks for watching part two of how to build a patio cover. Um, look for our next videos coming out. Uh, I've got all kinds of stuff coming up. I've got a cell tower I built up at our our, our homestead. I've got uh, survival food, backup generator power. Uh, we have got our garden is just going crazy. We have canning videos coming out. We have got all kinds of stuff coming up. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and uh, leave me a comment.